This is our visual representation of the shunting jar algorithm. We'll see how we'll come uh, how this infix expression will be converted to postfix notation, also known as reverse Polish notation. First, while there are input tokens, read the next token from inputs. These are all tokens. Now, we must uh, we, uh, we check is token a number? Yes. Then, uh, if it is, add token to output Q. Now we read the next token from the input. Is the token a number? No. Then it is an operator. And we must check it, uh, compare it with the operator at the top of the stack. And since there are no operators, we can just push it. We read the next token. Yes, it is a number. So we add it to the output queue. And we read the next token. Is it a number? No, it is an operator. So we check, uh, we compare this operator with the operator at the top of the stack. If, if the operator at the top of the stack has higher or equal precedence than the current operator, we should pop the top operator and add it to the output queue. But since the multiplication symbol has more precedence than the subtraction symbol, we can push it to the operator stack. Now we read the next token in the input. Is it a number? Yes. Add it to the output queue. Now there are no input tokens left, so we leave that loop and run our last series, series of, of steps. Pop all remaining operators from operator stack and add them to the output queue. So pop, and we add it to the output queue, and pop, and we add it to the output queue. And here we have the expression in postfix notation. This is the expression in postfix post notation that we are passing as input in the algorithm so we can follow it step by step. The first step of the algorithm checks if there are tokens left in the input. Now, all of these elements are tokens, uh, and I repre represent all operands, that is numbers, in blue sticky notes, and the operands in yellow. Now, since there are tokens in the input, we go to the second step, which is a conditional statement. And the conditional statement is, uh, asks if is the token a number? If yes, push it onto the stack. Imagine this 
This is a Lego brick. So you could picture this tag. So I could picture it better too. And now again, it goes through the loop. It checks that there are still input uh, tokens in the input and checks the next token if it is a number and yes it is a number so push it onto the stack and again it checks if there are tokens in the input and the token is a number so it push it pushes it onto the stack and now yes there are still tokens in the input is the token a number no there it must be an operand and now it says that to pop uh, one token from the stack this would be the right operand and again now pop a, num a token from the stack and this and this will be the left operand this is why the postfix notation is so valuable because this way the computer knows the values the operation is going to evaluate before no, uh, well they are stored in memory before it knows which operation is going it is going to apply to them and next it evaluate evaluates the operator so two times three equals six Now it says push the result to the stack. Now this could all just they just go away. And it goes again through the loop. Are there LN, are there tokens left in the input? Yes. Is the token a number? No. Then push, sorry, pop a token from the stack. It, this would be the right upper end. And then again, pop a token from the stack. This would be the left upper end. Two minus six equals negative four. And push the result to the stack. And there is a condition that says if there is only one token left in the stack, then that token token's value must be the value of the operation. So it equals negative 4.